Is this thing on? Hello! My name is Eos Pantera of Z Reviews. If you haven't seen my face, you missed my face reveal back in May of 2023. Anyway, this video, thank you to my sponsors for sending me to CES. That's right, that thing that happened a couple months ago, I was there in Vegas doing the whole thing. I got the, the room sponsored by Linsol, I got the trip sponsored by Deconi, and I got the Ubers and the food sponsored by Apos. So thank you to those three sponsors. Links in the description, check them out. Um, what's happening here is very odd because uh, like always, I take like six hours of footage and like always, I don't edit. And like always, I'm months late. So what's happening is I actually premiered the CES coverage a few weeks ago on my second channel. If you're not subscribed to Zio's second channel, you should be, because I'm going to try to use it more and more interestingly. I'm actually simulcasting my Twitch streams, which happen one Wednesday and Sunday on the second channel. And due to the amount and volume of usually the trips I go on, what I'm going to end up doing is putting the uncut footage, as long as it can end up publicly on YouTube and not full of music, like if I go to Axpona and walk in and out of rooms, that kind of ruins things, because every time a song's playing, YouTube comes down with a band hammer. Um... But a show like CES isn't really music-centric. So I was able to spend four whole days there and uh, explore the show in, I guess, what you would call a different perspective. For the people who actually did show up for the premieres on the second channel, they said, wow, I've never realized that CES was like this. And that's the way I went into it. I didn't go there like as the tech tuber or an audio tuber. I went there as a human fucking being. I wanted to see what this was all about. And so I didn't have a plan, and I didn't know what it was like, and I can bring you along with me. Um, so what this is, is the DVD menu. So I've got a bunch of timestamps I've written down, a bunch of things that I've just, like, just put on a notepad saying, what was day one? Like, if you're interested in cat litter boxes, anchor power stations, food tech, pop sockets, and apparently billion color espresso portable displays... That's all day one. In fact, that's day one after 40 minutes, but before about an hour and 40 minutes. So I've got these huge lists. I'll try to put them in the description, as rough as they are, or there'll be a link to a text blog. I didn't do specifically every minute. I just said, okay, for about this much time, like for the first 19 minutes and 29 seconds, it's just prep and travel to get to Vegas. When the actual convention flo uh, floor starts is 19 minutes and 30 seconds. So let's give you a guide. Let's take you on a tour of CES. Let me give you my a couple weeks later um, impressions. Echo, turn off basement 11. I hate that light. Echo, turn off basement 11. If you have a, a Alexa, you, then you're fucked. Sorry. Um, so let's... CES is wild. And I'll put timestamps on this video, by the way. So you can go to the timestamps specifically when I start talking about the timestamps. On the other video, ignore the backgrounds. This is, I don't do these sorts of videos. Um, CES is not a place you go to. CES is Vegas. There's like eight buildings in three locations that take 40 minutes to walk between them. And you don't, the app is terrible and you don't know where anything is. You could search for a company and then it tells you where it is. But then the app doesn't tell you where you are. So you have to search where you are. And then you have to look in the map. And then it's, it's, uh, I go over it in the videos. It's just, it's mind-boggling how bad it was. Like, come on, you're CES. They literally AI-generated all their promotional work. All the faces with people wearing headphones was all AI-generated. I thought that was fascinating and terrible. Um, all right, let's just, let's just get into it. CES is fucking so much stuff. I shouldn't say the F word so much, but you know, I, it's not just me. It's what I do. CS has everything, literally everything. I'm going to drink while we do this. So there's no way Zios isn't uh, going to pour out his uh, s s s this stuff. Plum brandy. It's actually excellent. I'm just going to have a little bit of that while we sit here and chat about my time in Vegas. So, day one. Day one is the longest video. It's like two hours and 30 minutes, 2.40. I was like a kid in a candy store because I showed up. The first place I went to 
um, was Eureka Park. And if you never heard of Eureka Park, that's one of the, it'll be the only place I go if I go back to CES. I go there first. I went there first by accident. Just had to get to a hotel. There was like 30 places you could pick up your badge. You could pick it up at the airport. That's how big CES is. You could literally get off the plane and up until midnight, get your badge at the airport. Because it's just there's no like one spot. There's just tons of spots. Um, Eureka Park is international stuff. There's literally a Korea section, a Japan section, an Israel section. And it's all the innovations and startups from all those different places. And there's just the wildest, the wildest bunch of things from apps that you just run on your phone that make you look like you're on fire to uh, robots that climb steps to deliver packages to medical devices that make absolutely no sense to anyone outside the medical world. There was like a, I'm not even looking at the notes at this point. I'm just remembering it from the vividness. There was a $130,000 massage table that was just a regular massage table like you could get at Walmart and they put a robotic arm on it like one of those like put together a car but smaller with like a foot and it would have a camera that scanned you and then it found your spots and it was like it could absolutely rip a hole through the back your middle of your back and kill you so I guess the hundred and thirty thousand dollars was mostly for safety it was a flying car so basically going on the list after we get to the show day one there's a 300,000 watt, 300,000 watt, 300 kilowatt um, fuel cell generator, the size of a regular generator that they say is coming out in two years. I feel like a lot of this stuff, by the way, I'm going to reiterate this because I say it in the videos. I feel like a lot of the stuff that I show in this video will never actually happen. Like, yeah, they have a flying car that's based on a drone design and you can pre-order it now for $5 and all it costs you is an additional 300,000. And then I'm like, I literally specifically ask, because I'm not normal. I was me there. So I'm like, oh, this is great. What are the regulations? Can I fly it over the White House? Like, I asked the questions, and she was just like, ah, ah, ah. So you want to have Zeos making people make faces because he's asking the hard-hitting questions. This is real journalism right here. Anyway, uh, air-powered car conversions, stair-climbing robots we talked about, intense genital red light care i shit you not i didn't stop or take a picture there was just a, a lot of red light therapy where you put light there was one that was there was a picture of a, of a it was just on it okay um the swordfish is there you'll see that um then around so that's from 20 minutes into about 40 minutes in 40 minutes and beyond is the 5 50 000 block which is the second floor which was like big spaces, but still not like big companies. It wasn't Sony's, it wasn't Samsung's, it wasn't LG's. It was, I'm just going to read this list. And if you're interested, you go to day one, linked in the description. I'll have all four video days. Day one is cat litter boxes, hair dryers, anchor solutions, bidets, body dryers, TV suction cups that hold your TV to the wall. Apparently everyone was freaking out about that. Like that is the worst idea. Why just, just stop. Um, food tech, which I actually talked to a guy about a big, expensive barbecue for a, a while, because I like food. I like food. Um, pop sockets, which I got one, but it's not a pop socket. It's a different type. Plant tech, weight loss tech, connectors for some reason. Oh, I saw my first sponsor, Linsoul. Linsoul slash Keyboom, because they were there. This was their first year, which is why they sponsored me to go out. They're like, hey, we're setting up. So they were showing off keyboards, and they had one set of... Of the elites, let me try to get comfortable. I don't know how to. I don't know how to sit. I'm like Peter Griffin. I forgot how to sit. Um, yeah, they had interesting stuff. Linsoul was like a little bit like we have never done this, and I'm a little bit like I've never done this, and we were all, it was great. They took me out for dinner later. Um, blowy fans that look like hair dryers, but they're like super powerful. A billion color espresso portable display. I actually want one because I have. I actually brought up a topic. I recently purchased like a twelve hundred dollar Canon printer for printing out. Well, it won't kind of print that big, but much nicer quality. And I literally, my monitors are not good enough to tell me what I'm previewing before I'm putting it through this insane Canon printer. So I would actually use one of their like billion color seventeen inch monitors to preview before I print it. Um, probes. I just wrote probes. More keyboards. Really weird. Like. CES is like Amazon.com. 
you get your Sonys and your LGs, and you get the car section, which we're going to get to on the day two, where there's big brands. And then you go to the part where it's like Jiggy Boo keyboards, and it's like, what? And they just have a whole display of it. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Um, lots of solar cells, lots of uh, at-home CNC machines, things like that. Like The 50,000 block is still like the small innovative block. Um, 3D printer accessories, exercise tech for people who do that, whatever the hell that's, that is. And then at a, an hour and 38 minutes and 27 seconds, I finally fixed the color on this camera because I was running getting like D-log because I was going to do color corrections, but then I realized the ch light was changing so much for every part of the pavilion that I would have to do multiple color things. And I said, fuck that. So then I put into this normal color, which looks great. Everything looked great. Great. Um, so if you're worried about the color for the first hour and 38 minutes, I fix it. Um, I actually go back down to Eureka Park at an hour 38. I find it, and because I, I, I couldn't dig through, there was so many things. I think the specs for CS was 4,000 exhibitors. 4,000. And they were estimating 130,000 people attending. So just your fucking brain is like 130,000 people. Not in one building, in eight buildings across the entirety of the city. So you'll never see the same people twice. And I don't even know if I saw 4,000 exhibitors. I think I got to most things, but honestly, I just ran out of steam after like day three. So um, I go back downstairs to Eureka Park. Gaming for the Deaf did a really cool thing with uh, LEDs showing around a computer monitor so you could play games. You could hear like, they had Minecraft up, which did specific... It could tell if the sound was an enemy and would flash red in the orientation. And I'm like, this is awesome. Now sell it to not deaf people, because that would be awesome for me to have. Just like point the LEDs backwards, just do some lighting up of the wall, get that company some money generation. There was a lot of companies there that I truly wanted to see succeed too, which I wasn't expecting. We get to one ECM Motors, which they just make motors. And I'm like, who am I? I'm just an audio guy. But every motor in my life, and you have a lot of them in your life, could be better, more efficient, and quieter if ECM Motors took over. So they're not sponsoring this video, but I I spent like two hours there talking with them, and there's this cool thing. We'll get to it. Um, so Gaming for the Deaf. There was a robot dog and a real dog in the same spot, and I'm like, oh my god, it just happened. So if you want to see that, that's after an hour and 40 in the first day. Um, touch sensors, more robots, so many robots. Eureka Park is like... Did you know robots? Yeah. Um, 20 channel surround sound sphere pod with Dyn Audio speakers. I don't want to ruin it, but it was $10,000 and it sucked. But I don't want to ruin it. So go check out that. That happens down there. Um, packaging carts you ride, all terrain motorcycles and scooters with like tank treads. Like really cool, sh cool shit. Drones, holograms. Hand dryers, just random hand dryer companies, and a giant 3D printer company, which kind of blew my mind, because it was like they showed off just the head of the printer. It was just sitting there. And it was this little booth, and it looked like, like no one was going to work there. They had a printer in a picture that was printing a Porsche bumper, a Porsche bumper, in, in its entirety, and it used like eight nozzles simultaneously to print... Like, I'm like, why are you in the corner? of? Shouldn't you be showing this off, like, on the main floor somewhere? But that's just CES. There's so much stuff that's from companies you will literally never hear of or ever hear of again that are doing such awesome things. I'm not drinking enough. You're right. Um, anyway, that's we get to that. Now we're at two hours and eight minutes into the video. So you've watched Airport 1930, then 40 minutes in, I get upstairs and then about downstairs an hour and 40 minutes in now at two hours and eight minutes i have the world's most expensive lunch price to performance never go to ces without eating a lot of food beforehand and planning a big dinner afterwards because if you're hungry at the show and you don't have a snack in your bag you're going to pay 18 dollars for a four dollar you know what? Gas station. A gas station. Not a good gas station. Not one of those European ones. One of those, like, real heart-of-the-country American gas stations where, like, the hot dogs spin for 75 days, and it's like, at 76 days, they think about getting rid of them. It was that quality sandwich and, like, a Powerade, and it was $18. So I was very upset. 
Sponsored trip. Doesn't matter. Hated every second of that. Um, so after two hours and eight minutes, from that piss poor fucking lunch, I'm looking at you, Vegas. It's a Vegas problem. Um, paper batteries. Guy just shows up out of nowhere. He's like, hey, paper batteries exist. And I'm like, holy fuck. And they're designed for like, like instant read thermometers or something that's supposed to be used and thrown away. So that's great. You can throw away a battery and it'll just dissolve. I love that sort of thing. Uh, autistic VR. I don't want to go into more detail. You can go watch it. There's a big helmet. You'll see. Um, flying cars. The robot massage I was talking about. Hearing aids. They had all the hearing aid rigs, and I was act that was actually something that was interesting to me. My father may need a hearing aid at some point. Plus, it's an IEM, essentially. Very expensive IEM. Probably doesn't do a lot of bass response. Get a Rinko instead. Um, more robot arms. Tomato analysis. There was like a robot that looked like it was getting ready to... It looked like Matt Damon brought it back from the movie... Where was Matt Damon in Mars? Matt Damon. The Martian. That was it. It looked like it was from The Martian. And then there was a Nixie tube display that did times. And the guy thought I wasn't a weeb. And I was like, let me show you I'm a weeb. Um, anyway, then we go... Apparently, I label this two hours and 36 minutes. I go back upstairs. But see, that end of the day, I see the bio bidet space. But no one's there for me to hand up my business card. I was very upset. And then I show you exactly how not to leave CES. Word of advice. Show's over. Everyone's going home. Don't be an idiot. Don't call an Uber to the show. They'll never come. Instead, put on your coat, take a lovely walk into the middle of fucking nothingness, and then call an Uber. You've been walking for se for seven hours. What's another fucking 15 minutes, all right? Idiot Zeos didn't know this first day. Idiot Zeos becomes wise to Zeos second day. Um, anyway, now we're on to day two. So, again, links to all four of these days in the description. You can watch my soul slowly break as it goes on. Day two is a different pavilion. It's a bigger pavilion. And it is mostly car stuff for the first half. And I couldn't be happier. I'm a car guy. I love car things. Electric car chargers. Whole pavilions on those. Including one that's designed to do like this. I'm sure someone will gift this on the internet. That charges like massive equipment. I think it, he said like 2 million watts. It could like shove. It literally was a 2 million watt dick. All right. You want to see a 2 mi million watt mechanical dick? It's on day two. Um, cool tractors and bobcats. Like literally bobcat was there. And all my childhood dreams came true. Remote control giant tractors with like claws on the front of it. So cool. Um, giant electric chargers for buses. Electric conversions for trucks. It was literally like a Ford F-150, like, up on racks, and they had replaced, like, the rear differential was now a rear differential coming off a gas motor, but there was an electric motor in the rear differential to just give it a motor out of nowhere. Like, that is such cool tech. I don't remember any of the brands, by the way. You can go find them out in the video. Um, trailers and delivery trucks seem to be a hot topic there. Like, fancy trailers to live in. I don't know. There was an autonomous tank. Can't go wrong with that. Really extremely expensive looking brake lights. Like basically LED. If LCDs and LEDs had a baby to make brake lights, that's what it looked like. Straight Blade Runner 2049. Um, at 41 minutes in, uh, I find the Car Audio Superstore. Not a good one. Just like the Bronx behind the other rest of the diner. There's a place where the guy sells speakers. I found that at CES at 41 minutes. The world's fastest hill climb car was there. And it made no sense because it was this beautiful, svelte little, little, it looked like the fastest car on the earth. And it was at a, um, like the parent company of the company that made that had another company. And they made like bunker sized EV chargers. And they just like brought that car for fun. So you know what? Shit. Um, giant caterpillar tractors, like, for going into mines. I got to play with, like, that. And by play with it, I mean, like, touch it. Um, John Deere was there, and they had, like, full combines. Because why wouldn't you bring a full combine to Vegas? That's just exactly what you do. Uh, 54 minutes and 30 seconds. I just wrote in this text document, where am I? <laughs> because I have no idea. And then, uh, 58 minutes... 
Uh, I'm at the main hall, and I switched the mic mode. Oh, there's problems with the audio on all these videos. This camera, right here, has four settings for the microphone. Front, back, front and back is the third setting, and the fourth setting is all. Isn't that front and back? Wouldn't that just be all? Or is there another microphone that's not used unless you use all, and it's just front and back, and then the mystery microphone that... I... Anyway, as the camera turns, whatever it's pointing at gets audio priority. So if I'm filming my face, you hear me just fine, like here. But if I turn it around, I get real quiet, and you can't hear me very well. So then the camera turns back around, and it turns around. Better with headphones and speakers. Try to listen on speakers made it a little bit... Like, I got real quiet, but you don't want to hear me anyway. I don't to talk too fucking much. Um... Apparently, after 58 minutes, and I I complain about CES. That's that's good to know. Um, there's some wild USB cables. I meet Apos. Thank you, Apos, for sponsoring part of the video. Uh, they they basically paid for all the travel and food, which wasn't a lot. I think they give chipped in like 500 bucks. Well, although a huge portion of that was that fucking sandwich. Um, so thank you to Apos. We get to see them. They had SMSL stuff, topping stuff. A really nice the feel F I I L has like a desktop. A speaker that's like a luxury speaker, which looked really nice, that uses a dedicated USB dongle to use the highest level of Bluetooth connectivity that's basically lossless. So, good for them. Audio-Technica guys fucking steal me. They love... I don't know why they love me. They must love me because I'm... I hate most Audio-Technica things. No. Alright, I love the 40s. I love the 2000Xs. Yeah, Audio Technica is fine. Um, dra they dragged me around. And that actually brought me more into like the large actual company arenas. So Audio Technica dragged me to their little spot. From there, Hisense, which is like, okay, it's Hisense. Isn't that cheap TVs? They're fucking, they must have spent millions of dollars. They developed like a miniature like sphere, like the Vegas has a sphere outside. They had a little miniature one. And by little miniature, I meant it was 16 feet tall doing all sorts of projections on it. Um, there was magic projectors. Don't know what that means, but I wrote it down. And then I found the Canon booth, which is cool because photography, while not my interest, uh, anything to do with printing was great. Uh, there's a lot of good Canon stuff. You can't go wrong. At 1 hour, 31 minutes, and 30 seconds, if you wanted to see those LG see-through televisions, because that was like the buzz thing at the show, was AI on everything. There was the rabbit little pocket thing, which I didn't see. I didn't see the Apple Vision. If you're wondering about Zeos and the Apple Vision, who cares? It's like $8,000, 4000 It's more money than it needs to be. And little, little, little note on if you're interested in the Apple product. Apparently, no one was allowed to take pictures of people wearing the Apple Vision because Apple employees would take it and then they would crop out the battery pack which is not sexy with the wire going up, they would just remove that. So it looked like it was just a visor, which it isn't. It's a whole, like, cumbersome four-pound thing. Anyway, off of my Apple hate for a minute. Uh, See-through TVs from LG at one hour, 31 minutes, and 30 seconds on day two. Laser engravers, in case you want to laser engrave things, which actually I do have a laser engraver, and I haven't tried to laser engrave on top of, like, amps and DAX. I'd obviously put anime titties. Um, one of the coolest things at CES was by the company... Oh, Jesus. It's the pinball machine company. The pinball games. I forget. But after an hour 31, and before an hour 43, I go to a pinball thing where they're showing off the new pinball games for the for the movie Jaws. You know this new movie? You ever hear, hear of it? I think it came out in like 1970. Echo, what year was Jaws? The first Jaws movie, Jaws, was released on June 20th, 1975. Yeah, it was 1975. The most recent movie in the franchise, Jaws, The Revenge, came out on July 17th, 1987. Well, at least it ended in the 80s. All right. Well, yeah. So anyway, they got the rights to the movie Jaws to put it on a pinball machine. I guess this was a big deal, although I feel like Jaws would have been a pinball machine in 1976. But they had the most realistic looking wax figure of, um, oh, Jesus, I don't remember. The, just go watch. The, 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 Hooper, no, Hooper was the guy. I'm forgetting the character's name. 
the captain, the, the dirty old sea dog, him. And it, it got to the point where I was three feet from this wax figure, and I didn't know if it was a real person or not. Like, I was like, huh, huh? It gave me this weird feeling in my chest of like, don't get too close to this. This is going to be a guy that's going to reach out and touch me. Um, so that was friggin' amazing. Honestly, the coolest thing I've, I've literally ever seen at one of these shows was a wax figure of a character from a movie that was... Like, if someone, whoever built that figure could build me, like, a waifu figure, that would be great. Um, at 1 hour and 43 minutes and 58 seconds, so 144. I was very specifically timing on this. At 1 hour and 44 minutes on day two, I find the medical tech section, which only had one male enhancement booth, and I was very upset by that. But the rest of it, um, after the robot strokers, were robot mowers, cute Zambonis, pool robots, and air filtration. And let me tell you, pool robots... Didn't know they were this big an industry. Apparently, everyone and their mother needs a pool robot. Don't have a pool? Doesn't matter. You have a bathtub. Pool robot. Um, but yeah, the medical tech stuff was really cool. Like dialysis machines. A lot of stuff that's very specific. My sister would have loved it there. But um, I talked to a couple people for and over there. Uh, and that's when, after all that, that's a short section. At one hour and 59 minutes, I make it to ECM Motor Systems. And all I can tell you is motors are cool and you should go to one hours and 59 minutes and watch me play with a, a rig that's designed for um, don't look at this this is not the this is exactly the hand motion when you see it you'll understand the hand motion it's more like this um the things you're able to do with motors is, is absolutely nuts and for all you f1 fans out there apparently ecm motors is the company that is specifically and directly responsible for making the motors for Formula One simulator steering wheels. So if you want to build your own steering wheel system that's just like the pros, literally ECM Motors. He's talked about it so nonchalantly. And I'm over here being like a, a sim racing fan, not an F1 fan, so to speak, but a sim racing fan for sure. And that's like, like what? That's the holy fucking grail of sim racing is you have the motor assembly that the Formula One official Formula One simulators that they practice and use why isn't that just a giant banner over here? What is happening? So I try to talk to that guy about how to be a better marketer for their products because they need marketing so bad. And um, just just that alone. Just show up at Sim Race and be like, we got it right here. Slam that shit down. It was this little pancake motor like that. Um, and then uh, show and electric motorcycles and cars. Show and electric motorcycles and cars. So that's the end of day two. So we're 27 minutes into this video. If you're just watching this video and listening about CES, that's good enough. Don't forget to check out my sponsors. Linsoul, Taconi Audio, and Apos. That's all you got to do. Click the links, tell them I send you, and tell them to send me back or send me to Munich. I'm going to need to gather sponsors from Munich and things like that. By the way, I have a gimbal camera on a tripod. Isn't this weird? Look how weird this is. This is super weird. Um. Anyway, let's get on to day three. Wait, where is the thing? Did I even talk about the thing? No, no. Day three is the day three is a better day. Day three is short. So, door C two. I I tried to outsmart getting in to CES by having it drop me off near CES and not at it instead of going through the whole nightmare. So I just picked a random like hotel that was down the road because I'm going to walk all day, and it ended up putting me on the wrong side of the show, and I ended up walking through like. Well, you'll see. Um, and I saw a door C2. I saw a Vegas sign. And I, I had a goal to see SVS because SVS was presenting there. And SVS has their new actual hi-fi end speakers, like $5,000 pairs of speakers. So I, I head over to SVS really quickly from where I ended up to where I was back. Um, got them to stop playing the music so I could film. Because, again, if there's music playing, this doesn't work. YouTube just goes, nope, off. Uh, SVS stuff is real cool. I need to get a hold. I want to get a hold of the six and a half. I don't even care about the big ones. They're just, they're a lot. The, the, the white six and a half are probably like, mm -hmm. um, folding TVs, quarter million dollar folding TVs, first of all. And not like little TVs. It was like a 180 inch mini LED TV that folded like an accordion and then laid down, but they couldn't activate it because it would trip all the circuit breakers in this, in the whole building. So, you know, if you want to see that, too bad. I saw Insta360 and got a hold it in my hand, which is why I don't plan on using that for videos. 
because it's just too fucking heavy, and other people have said it doesn't focus near field anyway. I was in Sony for a while. I found the Sony area. Now, I like Sony, all right? They don't make the greatest audio stuff, but they're, they're all right. They, they make my phone. I got my Sony phone. You know, they got the PlayStation. They had a bunch of sim... Oh, everyone had sim racing rigs and pool cleaning robots. And other robots at a certain height. Look, the light came back on. Um, I was in Sony forever. Here's the reason. Their carpet was really soft. My feet were killing... This was day three. All right? That, their carpet, Sony, 10 out of 10 carpet. Right? It was like that thick. It was like shag. And you just like you just you sunk into it. And it was very, very tranquil. It was very tall ceilings and white lights. And I don't know what the fuck they were selling. Literally don't know what they were selling. They had some more wax figures from Last of Us, because they produced Last of Us. Finish more alcohol. Um so if you want to know what Sony does, is they basically set up like a weird germ-filled spa where you can't do they had, like, cool, like, movie camera tech. Hold on. They had cool movie camera tech. Where they had a an Unreal Engine rendering a Porsche. In, and then in real time, you could take an actual physical body on a rail system and move it. And it would move the virtual camera in the Unreal Engine to make it look. So if you were a videographer and you're working on... Arcane season two or three, and you want to do a handheld camera scene with the Sony tech and the tracking on it, you can literally pick up a real camera and walk around an imaginary thing, which you can see in the viewfinder and film the thing. And it's like, that's way cool. I don't know how well many people are going to spend the money on it, but it's way cool. I also visit Samsung, see my favorite television of all time, which is an 85-inch mini OLED 8K. 85-inch, uh, well, it's alcohol. Mini LED 85-inch 8K for $6,500. I saw that at Cedia, if you watch my Cedia coverage. And it's just glorious. And I don't even know what I'd do with it. I'd probably put it in the speaker testing arena vertically. And then just have it... Because then it would be the equivalent of a 50-inch TV on its side if it's... It'd be wild. Um, TCL. I don't buy anything from TCL, neither do you, but I saw their booth. Nikon. Uh, after after Canon, I had to see Nikon. Nikon had a really cool attachment add-on that was like a full grip that attached to the side of your camera. You could rotate at any angle. Beautiful feeling thing. I found Klipsch, which was actually Vox International, which apparently also does chemicals and car systems. And it was like... I have no idea, because, you know, Dad, this was not about going to see Klipsch. This is not a small show where you go to those micro brands that exist inside the big brands. You go to Vox International, and here are seven subdivisions, and each one of them has three representatives, and it's like, you could learn the power structures of large companies just from going to CES. So I talked to the Klipsch guy. I actually have a name I have to research, because I lost my contact at Klipsch, and I want to have more cool Klipsch stuff to talk about. Um, at 42 minutes and 30 seconds. So all this happened in the first 40 minutes of that video. At 42 minutes, I walked to the Venetian. Because I had to leave that pavilion because I meet my friend Alex. He was also the one who was at CDO. Um, so I start walking to the Venetian. It was a 40-minute walk for me. I edited it down by literally stopping the camera. Um, and we get to... Oh, really? So right after 42 minutes, there's the most awesome race scooters. That's another thing uh, that I should have mentioned. Pool cleaning robots, dick sucking robots, and massage chairs, and scooters. Holy fuck, the scooters. My brother is a firefighter. Let me tell you this advice right now. Look at me. If you have one of those cheap electric scooters that you like, go wee wee wee, and you charge it in your garage or something, don't. Literally, if they're cheap, if they're like $300 or under, those batteries burst into flames and burn your house down, right? They just, that's, go look up, like, on Live Leak, scooter fire, and then you'll just, you'll just never buy an electric scooter. That said, I really want to buy one of these electric scooters or have them send it. It was like seven grand, but they were like 60 mile an hour, all carbon fiber built on the island of Cyprus, and this company... 
whom I don't remember the name of and didn't write down, actually just make, and this is how this, this is how it works. The company started making just the boards that control the motors. So they make these motor control boards for everyone's scooter, but no one's putting them in their scooters. So they're like, well, fuck it. We'll make our own scooters to show off how good our boards are that control, like the control module boards, all the safeties and everything. So they ended up building scooters and they ended up building like seven to $12,000 race scooters made out of all like six mil carbon fiber. It weighed like 50 pounds and you could pick it up. I was like, what is, what is this insane thing? So that's how things work. You, you build this little part, but to show off little part, you need to put it in a thing that's, you know, the size of a, of a Honda and then bring the Honda. So a lot of weird stuff like that. There was a C Audio CU, which is Audio Q, which I was making fun of there. Uh, 3D rendered AI displays. And then it turns out they actually have a really interesting product. It's, well, you'll see it in the video if you go to 41 minutes, 40, 51 minutes and 14 seconds. I really shouldn't be drinking on camera. Maybe if I have more, it'll be better. Mm. Anyway. 7.1 surround sound, no receiver required. No speaker wires requir required. Ooh, that required. You just plug everything into, you get a box, it plugs into a power outlet, a normal power outlet. The box that sits by your television that you feed all your signal into does Dolby decoding. And it wirelessly sends through your power to all these boxes that have 100 watts per channel. And you get seven of them, and it's $1,000. So you could have a essentially wireless surround sound. Problem with that being, there's not going to be a lot of options to set up and tune it. There's an app. But as also, the amplifiers aren't as clean as I personally would like. He was reading the specs, and basically you get like 35, 40 watts of clean. And then it's going to get distorted because it's class D. But I was shocked that you get seven amplifiers for $1,000 with all that other tech in it. And I would absolutely... You can't add it on to, like, the back of a normal system. They said they don't do that. And I'm like, you should. You'd sell, like, 500 times more of that than the whole system. But I understand them. they want to do the whole system. So Audio Coup was cool. I'm at my friend Alex's point. We find Kohler. Kohler. The bold look of Kohler. The toilet company. Kohler. We got to see their $10,000 toilet. Do you not want to see a $10,000 toilet? I wanted to see a $10,000 toilet. I don't want to own it, but I wanted to see it. So if you want to see a $10,000 fucking dollar fucking toilet, please, after 51 minutes on day three, you will find that. Um, PC monitors from companies that were doing like OLED monitors and mini LED monitors that had like these cool heat sinks to dissipate the heat. And they were like gaming ones that looked really cool, even though I'm probably... And they weren't... There were too much red drive in them, but I would love to sit there and tweak them and see how good they get. I gave that one my card. I really should find hers and be like, send to me monitor. I want cool monitor. Um, more cooking tech I somehow found. And at one hour and four-ish minutes, I go back to Eureka Park. Eureka Park is the star of CES. Any other YouTuber who doesn't spend the entire time there is fucking failing you for entertainment values. Um, Wild Games with Tracking and then I'm on Fire. Cowboy Bebop IEMs, Evangelion IEMs, Monogatari IEMs. I don't think I filmed most of those, so I'm just mentioning them because I was actually talking to the rep and be like, yes, I do review. I went, to, there was a place with wireless IEMs covered in anime people. Not even girls, guys too. It was oh my god, it was it was everything you could ever want. So I'm like, give me this stuff. Uh, crypto art canvas. I wrote down. I don't think anybody wants that. I don't think anybody wants. It was. I, I could try to describe this to you, but my shock and horror in the moment is going to be better. So feel free to just check out day three near the end. There was a thing that generated artwork on the fly for like a picture frame, but it wasn't like, oh, that's cool. It was also a cryptocurrency thing and I wanted to die. Um, at 18, 20, at one hour, 18 and 25 seconds, I go back up to the 50,000 block, which is just upstairs from Eureka Park. And that's when the massage chair sessions start. I also uh, go back, this is the, literally the massage chair sessions is the end of day three because my friend Alex had felt sick the day before. So we got in some of those like, $8,000 massage chairs. And we go through a cycle. 
And they're weird now. Like, they actually put your arms in a thing and they put pressure pads down. Like, they fill a bag of air to hold you in place and then lift your body up and stretch you. And they run you through this cycle and the bottom of your feet are getting fucking smashed with, like, rocks. The machines were trying to kill us. And then we went to another one and did it again because he's like, that first one wasn't enough. And I was, like, dying. And then the second one, the tablets they were using to control the, te- the chairs, they had, like, 20 chairs. And the tablets they were using were Bluetooth. And there was 20 chairs. So guess what gets freaked the fuck out? Bluetooth. So they couldn't stop it. It put me in the chair and hit go. And I was there for like 30 minutes getting pulled and pushed. And like my phone was in my pocket and I thought it was going to snap my phone in half. Like it was brutal. It was less intense than the Dr. Fuji chairs. But at the same time, more uncomfortable. Because it wasn't hurting me enough. I don't know. Maybe I'm a glutton for pain. Maybe I'm a glutton for pain. (laughs) Probably shouldn't do that with alcohol. That's a bad idea. Um, Before we move on to day four, which is the last day, I need to introduce you to someone. There is a clip of video that for some reason got corrupted and wouldn't let me add it to either day one, two, or three. But I need you all to meet Dr. Fuji. All right? This is important. Because if you wanted to know the best part, you won't see it in those four videos. You have to you have to t- come with me. Come here. Come here. Watch. Can you see the TV? This is how Zeos edits video into uh, another video. He simply wills it to happen. Oh, wait. I gotta get that hat. I love your hat. You know, I wear the hair. It's 11 years before. 11 years before any of that time? 11 years. Oh, boss. Right now, it's a real boss. I agree. I'm This hat is looking hot. This is your, where this hat is under mission. You gave me your energy, power. Oh, you're getting power from the hat. Yeah. You boss. There you go. No. That's right. I like it. I like it. It, looks, it works good. You know, that was, oh, um, that's Dr. Fuji. That was, that was, that was the man himself. Dr. Fuji, the man who created all those massage chairs that hurt me so good, wearing the boss hat that I don't even know that was a thing you could purchase, and it gave him special powers. So you want to meet people? If you're an introvert, here's the thing. I discussed this during the, during the video. If you're introverted, do not go to CES. Or go to CES to become an extrovert. Because you can't not. There's too many people to talk to and interesting stories to tell. I met I don't know if that was day three or four. I don't know if I wrote it on the list. I met um, the man who did the promotion for the very first autonomous robot in the 80s. Like 1980, like 80, like 80. He was the guy. He didn't the guy that built the robot. He was the guy that promoted the robots to try to sell them internationally. And he sells like four of them in boxes at home. And he was like big, long beard. And we discussed automation and what... I would love to have recorded those things. I met a conspiracy theorist who was like, let me talk, let me ask you about YouTube because you're a YouTuber. That got real weird. I mean, I'm okay with shit getting weird. It's just, as long as it stops and then I'm here in my safe space, with the safeness, just don't follow me home. But tell me all about your life. Like that guy that did the robot thing said he could heat a house. All right, get this. I don't believe him for a single second. He said he could heat a house... That's like 7,000 square feet with a hot tub using a chamber that pulls the air from the hot tub and then pulls it back into the house. And that's the only thing he in the house. And I'm like, all right. I didn't want to argue with him and say, like, I don't think there's enough BTU to do that. But I had that discussion with that man. Okay. The last video, day four. Um, I was dying. Day, four days, because here's the thing, I was there for six days, and I was at the shows for four of them, and I could have been even more, because it was two days I missed before I got there. You cannot do it. You'd have to ride there on a motorcycle. You'd have to have a, a luxury chair with wheels or something, because I was taking 30,000 steps a day. Most of them on carpet, but then most of them not. Day four starts with a trip to the Brazilian Steakhouse in Vegas. You know what? I'm just, just go to a steakhouse. At some point, you have to just live your life like you're like, hey, you know what? I'm in fucking Vegas. Why am I concerning myself with TVs and cameras? I'm here as a person, all right? I didn't take this trip 
uh, to be some sort of weird fucking media YouTuber that, oh, I gotta get the, that's why the video's coming out now. Look at the date. Shit was in January. I don't, I didn't go there to be the hype bringer. I brought, okay, I went there because I wanted to see what it was like. Give me one taste of it. I enjoyed that taste, but I'd know better next time. Um, Brazilian Steakhouse. Back to the Venetian. Upstairs to the Global Pavilion. There was apparently another section that I missed. Missed a lot of sections. The map is terrible. And the Global Pavilion was more international things. Like India had a section, but it wasn't downstairs in Eureka Park. It was on the second floor. It was in the 50,000 block. Um, Pedal Commander car shit, which I actually talked to them for a hot minute. If you know what Pedal Commander is, it's a little module you put on your computer in your car. And it's, so when you hit your gas pedal down, like normally when you put your gas pedal down, you're, 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 I'm describing how cars work now. Anyway, most cars are drive by wire. So when you have your gas pedal down, you're just a little sensor that reads and it's like, you want this much throttle. And then your computer has to calculate out based on where's your throttle position and, you, and you, are you going up a hill? What's your current speed? And it'll open the throttle, um, butterfly valve. That is actually what actuates and opens and lets air into the car. And Pedal Commander is better at, than your stock one. And it's faster. It, like, lowers the resolution, I think, is the way it works. So when you hit the gas pedal down, instead of it going, okay, I will open slowly, it goes, 50% at, and it just is. And people swear by the thing. So I don't know why I'm giving them a free promotion. Pedal Commander, send me something. I got a 2012 Caprice PPV. All right, cool. Um, CES Hall of Fame. Apparently there's a Hall of Fame, which it's, it blows my mind. Like, was that Hall of Fame set up day one? Or did people go around and judge things and take votes and then set up things? Because they brought pieces to it and set up in, like, glass cases. And I feel like if you were just showing up for CES and you went just to the Hall of Fame, it would be the worst thing ever. There wasn't a lot of great stuff in the Hall of Fame. There was, like, pictures of things that aren't there because they're too big to bring. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Three printed figures. Can't go wrong with that. And I mean big figures. I mean, there was an Iron Man mask that was full head size that I think they must have painted it after the fact. Like, it couldn't have been like, they didn't print it that color. But it was beautifully done. Probably the best looking Marvel prop I've ever seen. Thor's hammer was a little small. Uh, Creality was there. More 3D printer stuff. Really high-tech $4,000 binoculars that you could like lock a position and then hand your binoculars to your friend and it would put an arrow on the inside display and show you where he has to look to go exactly back to where you were looking. But they didn't do image stabilization. And I bought those $700 Canon binoculars that do and I take those over a $4,000 high-tech binocular any fucking day of the week. Um, by 30 minutes, this is the shortest video by the way because I was dead. Um, by 30 minutes, we find the Chinese ballrooms. And the end of Eureka Park. So by 30 minutes in, I find a section I hadn't been to. And it was three great big halls. Like low ceilings, just 150 booths set up. And it was like I walked into Timu. All right? I, I was shopping like a billionaire. It was just USB chargers and fans with lights on them, and more electric scooters that actually looked really cool. And you talk to them, it's like 1500 bucks, and I'm like, for everything that's here, it looks sounds a little cheap for that, what I'm looking at. So I'm assuming it was all built really crap. I realized that was the scariest section for me to be in. Because now we're on the last day of the show, like the show is ending. And I'm the only idiot walking around with a media badge around my neck. Because everyone who was doing media showed up the first two days, which I missed. So now, they're like, we sell shitty Chinese products. We want to sell you shitty Chinese products. Would you like to listen to our 97... Like, there were headphone displays in this section that I avoided like they actually had the plague. Because as soon as they saw my badge and asked me who I was, I'm done. I'm dead. I'm gonna just... They're just gonna... Here, take all these samples. We want one video every day. Could you do one video? No. Stop. So, I walked through that section, and it's... It was a cavalcade of interesting stuff, and I don't care. There was, like, microprocessors, which don't do anything for me, and magnets, which are cool. How do they work? So, I mean, I go through that for 30 minutes straight, like, running. Because the show was... It, it got to the point where they were ripping the stuff off the walls. So, I get out of that 
place, I leave the building, show's over, and I decide to walk to get my Uber, or Lyft, I was using Lyft quite a bit, and I walk to the Sphere, because the Sphere is at the Venetian. So if you want to look at the Sphere up close and get my opinion on it, I do walk to the Sphere starting at 58 minutes and 40 seconds on day four. Walk to the Sphere, walk past the Sphere, get my pickup, go back, pack up, and leave, and I take my trip home. And I barely film anything because I just couldn't be bothered. So what I've learned is I have like a two, maybe three day show limit. So if I'm going, when I'm going to Munich this year, um, you could expect me to be like dead by day three. Um, what do you think about this format? I should have asked this at the beginning of the video. Because YouTube is very strange on how much you upload, how long it is. You know, people are only watching your three hour long video for 19 minutes. So therefore no one's really watching it. So we're counted as not being watched. I can't help it. I'm making a bunch of video. I don't want to cut it out for you. I don't want to give you seven highlight reels. I want to give you the real experience, the painful experience. But if I could put out an hour long video or 51 minute video like we're on right now, explaining what's happening and then shove all the footage on the second channel. If enough people watch the second channel videos, that's good enough. That's good enough for sponsors. Click the sponsor links. Tell them you love sending me to these places. Send me to more places. I'll go. I just can't pay out of pocket to do something that isn't, you know, interesting or that you guys don't want to see. So yeah, click the sponsor links. I don't say it all the time, but they do matter. And when you buy something, if there's like a leave a comment thing, like like special instructions, send Zeos to Mars, and they'll probably try to do that. But um, yeah, no, CES was exhausting. It was way more stuff than I thought I'd ever care about and way weirder stuff. Like, it's going to suck because I know if I go back next year, if I skip, if I go every other year, which would probably be the best thing to do because there isn't something important every year. Although with AI happening so fast, as much as I'm not like a shill for AI, it, they do draw anime titties. So, I mean, AI ain't that bad. Um, but as much as I'm not a shill for that thing, I think by next year... Everything is going to be better in that respect. There was a fucking chair. There was a big banner on the wall. The first chair with AI integration. It was a chair. It was an office chair. It was like this Odin-like chair that I'm sitting in. Zeus, link the Odin-like chair. Odin-like sent me this chair. It's $1,000. It's fantastic. Um, but it doesn't have AI in it, so it wouldn't show up at CES. But yeah, I would do CES again. I'd probably prepare more. I'd look at the brands more. Although finding out these weird things that I... If you want to see the childlike joy of experiencing CES for the first time, days one and two got you covered. Days three and four are more like me and a friend just chilling and hanging out and playing with fucking Dr. Fuji. Dr. Fuji boss! Dr. Fuji boss, man! The hack gives me power. I'm like, this is awesome. I learned my lesson with food. I would know how to handle it better the second time around. Um, I'd invite a meetup. I would want to walk through CES with an entourage of people, A, to use you as human shields, so that when the companies are like, hey, you want to do this? Like, no, just, no, bring them around. Um, but just to just to have something to riff off of. Because I did the show alone. Like, my friend showed up for two days, and it was only really like a day and a half. So... I was there solo, and I haven't done a big show like this solo before. Like, even in Munich, I met up with, with Golden Sound and Skedra, and DMS was there, and the uh, the the guys from uh, Headphones.com were there. So there was, like, a gr core group, but there was nobody I knew. Like, even Audio-Technica, Apos, my sponsors, Linsoul. Don't forget my sponsors, damn it. Linsoul, Daconi, Apos. Um, click their links. Like, they only had some boost there. Like, Daconi didn't even have a presence there. But it was, like... There was so much stuff to see, and everyone was so excited to show you. That's another thing. Everyone who was doing those small little booths, not the Sonys, not the LGs, not the Canons, the little places. I'm getting the classic 1930s <laughs> drunk hiccups. Very lightweight. I am. They were so excited to show you this new thing. Look at our new thing. Our new thing is so cool. And I got excited because they had a new thing. I didn't even know what their thing was. But I was excited about their thing. Let me sh show me your thing. Oh, my God. Jim, have you seen their thing? Oh, my God. There's a dog. There's a dog humping a robot. There was just, It was all happening all at once. 
So I highly recommend, if you have a spare, like, four and a half, five hours, put on Zay's one through four in the second channel. Leave a like over there. Subscribe to that fucking madhouse. Of, of just, I don't even know what's going to happen on the second channel. But if enough of you go there, because there's like 13,000 people following it now, but if enough of you go there, I will put out more random stuff. This channel has to sort of be like the flagship channel. I have to respect the three-day release rule. Because YouTube doesn't like it if I do too many or too less. But now New Year's is rolling around. So I don't know if they want two-day releases or four-day releases. I don't know if they want my videos shorter, 720p. Maybe to make them smaller. Maybe make them smaller. They like it more. Right? YouTube is a goddamn nightmare. But the second channel is great because I don't give a shit. It's small. If enough people subscribe there, I'll just put out random things or whatever. I did my mini split installs. I had to shut my 36K um, Pioneer mini split off. I'll link that also in the description. Odin Lake and Pioneer. Also companies that have sponsored this channel, although they didn't sponsor me out to CES, but they keep my basement at a livable 70 degrees. Can't go wrong. Um, what was I saying? I need more alcohol to tell you what I was saying. We're, we're, at, we're nearing an hour. I want this to be under an hour, so. Re-fucking lax, man. Yeah, thank my sponsors. You guys have to do it. I can only thank them so much via email or text message. If you guys like, oh man, I can't believe you sent Zeos to CES. It was so cool. He did all this stuff. He would never, I would never have gone if Linsel didn't offer it to sponsor because it was their first show as well. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's go to Vegas. All right. Let's have some fun. Didn't even go to one strip club. I didn't have the, a fourth sponsor would have been specifically the strip club sponsor. So just next time, if you guys, if you have a company, I don't care if it's a coffee company. I don't care if you make bumper stickers. If you want to sponsor one of my videos, let me know. I will take your money and say your name. That's all I got to do. And then I got to use your money in a strip club in Vegas. Um, fear and loathing is all I could think of the entire time. Anyway, four videos linked in the description. Four, four days on the second channel. Check it out. I read through the things. I'll figure out a way to put this disgusting mass of text that I half wrote, half drunk, half asleep. Um, just listing names and brands. Like, I didn't even get to the cute Zamboni, like, and it was just a Zamboni. That was a smart Zamboni. That was, like, $100,000. It had, like, LED eyes that could, like, blink. Like, why is this a thing? And it's me having panic attack after panic attack. Not actually panic attacks. Just, like, brain fuck. Like, whoo, why is this a thing? There's so many of those that it's, it's great. It's a great fucking watch. Anyway, I'm done here. Thank you for hanging out. Everything, by the way, filmed on the Pocket 3. All my reviews in the future soon to be filmed on the Pocket 2, which is actually attached and, and down here. It's the little guy. The little guy. He's so small. That's why it straps to my head. Um, hope you enjoy those. Anyway, i got to end this. We're at 58 minutes. Thank you for stopping by. Please, if you haven't already, although I'm sure at some point you did click over the links in the description, uh, if YouTube changes its layout, by the way, I hate it. It put all the things to the right and down. It's bad. Check out the four days on the second channel. This has been your DVD menu guide. All it's missing is the bouncing logo that never touches the corner. And then you would have a, a complete experience of this. And, uh, yeah. What other shows would you like me to go to that are not audio related? Like, is there some weird train show in, like, Stockholm? Because I'll gather up sponsors. I swear. I don't care. I'll put it on this channel. Z doesn't have to review just audio gear. Z can review anything. I can review anything, even souls. Anyway, click my links. Thank you to my sponsors. Best girl. And I will talk to you all in the next video, which probably will be normal.